Jeremy Corbyn has launched Labour's general election manifesto and vowed to transform the United Kingdom if they win. He unveiled the wide-ranging plans in Birmingham, promising what he called a green transformation of the economy and a manifesto for hope. A Labour government would nationalise rail, mail, water and energy companies. They would build at least 150,000 new council and social homes every year until 2025, levels not seen since the late 70s. And Mr Corbyn said there'd be a one-off windfall tax on oil companies to pay back the damage done to the climate. There'd be big tax increases on higher earners and companies to pay for the plans. Here's our political editor, Laura Koonsberg. Her report contains flash photography. Is it time? Time for a much bigger state? Time for a government to spend and tax more? Time for a leader at its head who strongly believes the answer is yes. Thank you. To rapture in some of his ranks, but who presides over a party where there are still even doubts about him. Labour's manifesto is a manifesto for hope, a manifesto that's full of popular policies that the political establishment has blocked for a generation. <laughs> Labour is on your side. And there could be scarcely a clearer demonstration of that than the furious reaction of the richest and most powerful. He'd write huge cheques paid for with the public purse, using higher taxes on business and the wealthy, spending and changing the rules. Our investment blitz will rebuild our schools, our hospitals, care homes and the housing so desperately need. This will be investment on a scale you've never known before. We'll launch the biggest council house building programme since the 1960s and cap rents. He promised tough new targets for scrapping carbon emissions, extra free care for the elderly, the universal credit benefit system would go, along with university fees in England. There was now the familiar chant among the crowd. That poor sale. Labour would not privatise any more of the health service. Thank but you. when it As comes to the biggest right. issue in the country right now, only a careful restatement of the position. Jeremy Corbyn won't say whether he would stay or leave. He'd ask you on the EU again. We will secure a sensible deal that protects manufacturing and the Good Friday Agreement, and then put it to a public vote alongside the option of remaining in the EU. So let's take this out of the hands of politicians and give the British people the final say. With no final decision on Europe, no final decision on EU immigration. And it's not just the scale of the leadership's plan that's controversial. A small group of Jewish protesters were outside. Mr Corbyn, though, undeterred. It's time for real change. Thank you. Why do you think the whole country wants much, much bigger spending and a much, much bigger state? Because this manifesto has put rocket boosters on what you promised in 2017 and it didn't convince the country to give you a majority then. Yes, it is a radical manifesto. But if you travel around this country and you talk to people, radical answers are what's necessary. We've got to have an offer on the table that matches the scale of the problem we face uh, at the moment in the 21st century. If we can get, big if, beyond Brexit, Labour win this election. Do you think he's going to be moving into number 10? I hope so. I hope so. I promised my son that we could uh, play some FIFA there, so... <laughs> Does your dad play FIFA with you? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever family plans there are for Downing Street, this election is a huge and serious moment for the Labour leader and for all of us. As Jeremy Corbyn heads off around the country, be in no doubt his manifesto isn't about tinkering around the edges, but offering a totally different way of running the country. But there are doubts over whether it's realistic or whether the country is ready for him. Yay! Elections are about bold statements on big platforms, but millions of small moments too. We face an epic decision in a few weeks' time, but it will be taken one by one. Laura Kunzberg, BBC News, Birmingham.
Well, Labour's multi-billion pound plans would mean the biggest increases in spending, tax and borrowing we've seen in peacetime history. That's according to the leading think tank, the Institute for Fiscal Studies. Our economics editor, Faisal Islam, has been looking at Labour's proposals and what impact they could have on the economy. Faisal. Thanks, Sophie. This is a radical attempt to change Britain's business model involving not just huge amounts of public spending and investment, but also an attempt to rewire the way the economy works. There would be significant sums going to schools and reopening sure start centres for preschool children, about £16 billion, and more than £18 billion a year also to deal with healthcare and social care in particular. And £5 billion a year will be spent on an immediate inflation-busting pay rise and later earnings increases for public sector workers. Alongside other pledges, £83 billion in spending rises matched, yes, by £83 billion in extra taxes that Labour says it can squeeze from business and the rich. Firstly, for example, a whopping £24 billion would be raised by reversing corporation tax cuts. That's the tax on business profits. Higher taxes for the top 5% of earners, those on more than £80,000, including a 50p rate for those earning over £125,000. And this is new, a major change to the taxation of wealth, making capital gains tax rates the same as income tax, so as high as 50p rather than 28p, raising £14 billion. These are massive sums raised from a small number of wealthy people and businesses and raise real questions. Labour's tax and spending plans would take both tax and spending to levels not seen in the UK in peacetime. These are very big plans indeed. 80 billion of tax rises, they say just from companies and the rich. In practice, taxes on companies affect all of us anyway. But if you want this scale of transformation, you're actually going to have to have a broader set of tax increases than that and affect many more people. To the £83 billion extra day-to-day -day spending for the public sector, there's also long-term spending on, for example, creating 100,000 council homes a year. Add that borrowed money to the investment in a green industrial revolution and you get to a large sum of extra spending, about £140 billion a year, roughly the size of NHS England annual spend, hundreds of billions over the Parliament. Interestingly, the other parties are offering some similar ideas using government spending power to borrow cheaply to invest hundreds of billions in a green future, though Labour has pushed this by far the furthest. It is a decisive shift of Britain to a bigger state, taxing big business more, taking spending and taxation to levels in the British economy not seen outside of a crisis for decades. But as high as that is in UK history, it is just above German levels and it's actually around the average for Europe. Sophie. Faisal, thank you. Well, Jeremy Corbyn says that Labour's plans are radical and are about bringing people together. The party's also promising all workers at least £10 an hour for the so-called real living wage, with public sector employees getting a 5% pay rise as well. They'll offer free personal care to over 65s in England and in higher education. Labour says they will abolish tuition fees and bring back maintenance grants. On the crucial issue of Brexit, Labour are promising to renegotiate a new deal with the EU and then have another referendum, although Mr Corbyn will not say how he would vote. Our political correspondent Alex Forsyth has been to Hastings, a marginal seat with a small Tory majority that voted to leave the EU to find out what voters there make of the plans. There is a battle in Hastings. This seaside town was narrowly won by the Tories in 2017. Now, this working fishing port is exactly the kind of seat Labour needs for an election victory. On the edge of town, staff at this manufacturing business had half an ear on Labour's offer today. For some long-term supporters, it was persuasive. I believe in, in, in good housing for people. I believe in you know, good national health service, education. I believe in all the things that everybody else believes in. But I, I actually believe that Labour will do more for normal people. I think he plans to take a lot of that money from the rich, doesn't he? From corporations rather than from, you know, the lower classes. So I think that's, you know, a good way to go. And I think the um, and British Rail should be nationalised. There are some 60 employees here making high-end electrical switches in sockets, some of the many Labour wants to win round. Cameron, an apprentice, was attracted by uni without the fees. It's always that money part that's 
put me away from it, really. So if there were no fees, that might change your mind? Yeah, 100%. If there was no fees, I'd 100% go, and I think that's the same for a lot more people my age. Labour's pitch is investment across the board, but some aren't convinced. How can you say you're going to find all this money when all the other parties down the line, they've all done the same thing, but they've not found the money? So where does he think he's going to find it from? For many voters, credibility is an issue in this contest. Who will deliver what's promised? Jeremy Corbyn might hope this broad offer on domestic policy has wide appeal, not least to those whose priority isn't Brexit. The problem he has is how that goes down with Labour supporters who wanted to leave the EU and don't want another referendum. For many fishermen in Hastings, fed up with EU quotas, Brexit is the biggest thing in this election. This industry might have had Labour traditions here, but there's a loss of faith. Why have another referendum? Is it the best of three? Uh, it, it's a nonsense. You've had a democratic decision made by the people and that should be upheld. Yeah. If there was 10 million and one voted to come out and 10 million voted to go in, we should come out. That's right. We? The anger clear at the Angling Association, disappointment with pledges and promises. All this business about what they're going to do when they get in, they're going to give you free this and free that, they're going to give... I don't believe it. I don't believe anything anymore. Convincing voters in these key seats could win or lose this election. Crucial could be how Labour's policy offer compares to Brexit frustration. Alex Forsyth, BBC News, Hastings. Our political editor, Laura Kunzbeck, is here now. So Labour planning to spend and borrow huge sums of money. It would be like anything we have seen for decades. It's a really, really huge change that they're arguing for, a big departure from what's been the sort of political norm for the last few decades. But they believe that massive price tag is worth it because they think the country needs massive changes. But it would be really, really dramatic. In a way, watching Jeremy Corbyn and listening Jeremy, to Jeremy Corbyn today it's kind of felt to me like it's the manifesto that he's always wanted to present. You know, he's been the Labour leader for four years and it was kind of an application for the principles that he's known for in a 2019 setting. The big risk, of course, for the Labour Party is whether or not there are enough people in the country who are actually up for the really dramatic scale of change that they are arguing for. The polls, which we should be careful about, but the polls at the moment suggest probably not. But the election is three weeks tonight. And we saw last time in 2017 that the manifesto day for the Labour Party didn't get them to number 10, but it did create a big moment in the campaign that began to change the dynamics. And meanwhile today, some new figures about the amount of money that's being donated to political parties since the start of the campaign. That's right. And astonishingly, you know, in a way, when you look at it as, a, as an outsider, the Conservatives had £5 million being poured into their coffers in the first week of the election campaign. That's around 25 times equivalent amounts that were given to the Labour Party and to the Lib Dems. Really important to say, though, that they are all subject to the same spending limits in this campaign. So just because different parties have got different amounts pouring in or not, it doesn't mean that during the campaign they will actually be spending very, very different amounts around the country. But if anything, it's another reminder of just how, what the contrasts are like in this campaign. And I know I've said it before, I think I'll say it again in the next few weeks. This time, we cannot say they're all the same. Our political editor, Laura Kinsberg, thank you.